Okay, so for those of you that are maybe just joining us or just checking things out, I am the Tipsy Spinster and this is Sip and Spin. Today we're going on a road trip and we're taking a look at drop spindles because they are so portable and they're wonderful to take with you uh, when you're standing in line. A lot of people take their knitting with them or their crochet with them. There's no reason why you can't take your spinning with you as well. Kind of a fun thing when you get started, there are so many different drop spindles out there. My biggest recommendation is to find one that really speaks to you. Find a spindle that you absolutely love and that you're going to enjoy working with. And so this is one of the very first spindles that I ever got. So what I've done to get this started is I just have a leader started and I have it wrapped around the bottom and I'm gonna bring it up and around. This is a top whirl spindle. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about drafting. So I've pre-drafted this fiber. Again, this is Road Trip from Kamaj Fiber Arts. And I've drafted it into kind of a manageable width and I've pulled apart and I've opened up some of the fibers so they're going to be a little bit easier to work with. And it's so soft and fluffy. This is going to make a beautiful yarn. So as I get started spinning, I, of course, am spinning in the direction of the clock, and this is going to give me an initial S twist, and then I'll ply going the other direction, which will be a Z twist. So as I start plying, I have the yarn that's going to the hook, and then the twist is going to travel up to wherever my fingers are. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some fiber to demonstrate what I mean and so by putting the twist in here that's roughly how thick my fiber is going to be or it's going to be based on how much I pull out so I'm gonna go ahead and this is how I usually get my students started if one if I am teaching drop spindling in any of my classes. I just have them hold the spindle and practice getting the twist from the hook up to where their fingers are. So now I have the twist. Now here's the catch. If I let go here, the twist will shoot up through all the rest of my fiber and I don't want that to happen. And I do have some energy here and I'm gonna give myself a little bit more energy which means just a little bit more twist in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create kind of my drafting zone or my drafting triangle. I'm gonna pull out what I want. And this is pretty consistent. That's pretty much the same width as what I had before. So I'm gonna pull that out and I'm going to stop the twist from moving past my fingers. And it's kind of cool when I let go the twist travels up to where my fingers are. At this point, I will... Now, if I want thinner fiber, I'm going to need to draft out a little bit thinner, like so. so and as you can see, there was still some energy left in there because it's drafting up. And so there we go. Twist in. And so here is my drafting zone. And I'm going to pull some more out, keep it thin. And then when I let go, the twist travels all the way up, like so. And again, if I want it to be thicker, I'm going to draft, I'm going to have a bigger drafting zone. like so. So this has all been just sitting here. So what does that look like once we get started? I'm going to go ahead and use this a little bit as a support spindle and usually I like keeping the roving around so I've got access to it. And so now once we get spinning, you're gonna see here's my drafting zone and I'm always gonna break it or I'm going to stop it with my index finger and my thumb. 
So again, I'm spinning this way, which is the direction of the clock, and that's going to give me an S twist. And then when I apply it, I will apply it the other way. So here we go. And I will pull out more and let it travel up. So I'm holding this hand. Now, if you want to do it the other way, you can do it this way as well. So I will be spinning with my left hand and drafting out again, making sure the twist isn't going to travel past where I want it. So it's kind of cool. You see how this makes a triangle? This is called the drafting triangle. I'm going to pull that out to where I want it, and then I will spin in the direction of the clock, and then draft out. And when you're using the drop spindle, if it starts to spin the other direction, don't worry about it, because there's a lot of energy stored, and it's still going to travel up there up to wherever your fingers are, and you can always thin it out a little bit. So this is my more natural way of doing it, is controlling everything with my left hand. I'm just pulling out with my right. So here we go. Again, there's my triangle. And that's going to determine my width. Twist travels up, pull out more, and there we go. And so you can see as I'm winding on, I'm getting this lovely textured yarn. A little bit more. And if we want to take a look and see what our finished product is going to be, <laughs> that's why they call it a drop spindle. <laughs> if we want to take a look at what our finished product is going to be, I will spin some of this out. And let it spin back on itself just like if I were at the spinning wheel. And there we have it. That's what my finished yarn is going to be. It's very fluffy, which is exactly what I was hoping for. This year's Tour de Fleece for me is all about spinning woolen. And so even though I was kind of doing a worsted spin on that with a, a short draw as I was pulling it down, I'm still getting this beautiful, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy yarn that would absolutely make a gorgeous winter hat, um, scarf. I, have no, I make tons of yarn, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with half of it. Uh, family keeps telling me I should start selling it. <laughs> Is there a market for one-off tiny skeins? And there we go. You can see the drafting triangle. Get the extra fiber out of the way. I'll try to get my hands out of the way. <laughs> 